Hey guys, so today is our last day of seeding. We're down to the last 300 acres. We tried to go hard last night to finish. Uh, we went deep into the rain. We were unsuccessful. Uh, we were just going to plug up our fur lines and uh, it was sticky and slippery, and, uh, but we tried. So we all slept in. We had a really good sleep in. We all got up here at like middle of the morning. Uh, we're just going to enjoy this last uh, hour or two to finish off the season. So thanks a lot for following me around this season. season we started April 25th and it's, April, and it's May 27th today. Now we were shut down to some rain delays, uh, so on and so forth. But this is a pretty standard finish time. Typically we always try finish right around my older brother's birthday, which is May 26th. So, uh, we were trying hard last night on his birthday to get done, but uh, you know what? This is fine too. And then after this, we have a long journey back home, and hopefully that goes well. But it feels good. It feels good. To be. I know we're not done seeding yet. I know we're not quite done. We got a couple hundred acres here, but this is it, you guys. See, I got the tractor a little bit muddy. In the front of the drill. I think Brian might come over here and hop on the uh, case here. He wants to take it for a spin and uh, give his two cents about it. And I want to go back to old Johnny there and uh, remind myself of uh, what I'm missing. <laughs> hey, both good tractors, you guys. Both good tractors. And I know I missed a lot of things on my pros and cons, but that's what I had off the top of my head. Those are the those are the things that I first noticed when I hopped from tractor to tractor, tractor to tractor. Those are the first things I noticed. So, uh, there's other things. I know we could go into like probably 50 things for each tractor, but like that, that takes a lot of detail. I have to write that stuff down. I can't remember that stuff off the top of my head. All right. Let's finish seating, and then I'm going to do my happy dance. It's a terrible, terrible thing, and you'll probably want to gouge your eyes out afterwards. I'm just forewarning you. <laughs> so uh, Brian's just going to switch me out over here. He's on Johnny, pulling the same drill I am, same tank. So I'm just going to lift up. I'm in fifth gear. I don't know if you guys can see that or not. So we're going to switch. Brian's an old Johnny, and I'm an old Red, and we're gonna switch. Never leave your lunch. Never, ever, ever leave your lunch. I've learned that the hard way. We just did the uh, the exchange. Welcome, my old friend. Now this one isn't mine. It doesn't have the sideways, but. Oh, oh okay. All right. Okay, let's, where am I going to put my lunch kit? First thing I notice is the cab smaller. So, remember the other one I could reach all the way out and I couldn't quite touch it? This one I'm sitting center. No, I'm not flipping you off. Look at it. Cab's definitely a little smaller, guys. No foot pegs in these. Not until you get to the new 8RXs and so on and so forth. Okay. Okay. Right off the go, it's quieter. Definitely quieter. Yeah. Auto steer engage. I gotta get used to where all of his controls are here. That's annoying. I don't know why he hasn't turned that off. It's quieter, right? Because you guys can hear me a lot better. I got a blocked head. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? So I'm playing around with this steering resistance. So if I uh, up this all the way to the top, 
on old Johnny. Disengage the auto steer. It's actually quite hard to move. Okay? I'll re-engage the auto steer. If I do the opposite, it... Okay. That should just be out of scroll down. I'm just saying. That's painful. Then it's super easy. Okay? Super, like super easy. And I wasn't saying... Oh, auto steer. Let's put this back up to the middle. Okay. Now, when you are under load, there's still resistance. I'm not talking about this gets hard to turn. I'm not talking that this is hard to turn at all. You can still turn this with one finger just like you can with the case, just for a correction. But you can feel it in your butt. You can feel it, the resistance on that drill back there when you're turning slow or stopped. Or especially if you're on a hill and then you start to turn, you can feel it, all right? Um, that's all I'm saying, is you can feel it. Doesn't like that drill back there if you have to turn it on a hill loaded. It doesn't matter where or what setting you have in here. So, so right now we're under full auto, and uh, I want to be around that 4.8, which I am. And it's shifting all the time, like we are gear nine right now. Why? It's because it's a really easy pull. We're basically empty, we're just trying to run our, like we're on the last field, right? We're just trying to run our tanks right empty. That's what we're trying to do. So we're in nine, idled down to 1600. It's full auto, I'm not doing anything. You can set the parameters of it just like you can on anything. But I don't like it. I know what you're thinking, well, why don't you like it, Mike? Think about the fuel efficiency. I'm not worried about a little bit of a fuel savings, all right? Think about the wear on the transmission when it's shifting every five minutes. Da -dum, da -dum, da -dum. Like we're good right now, we're on a nice flat. But when you're loaded, this thing is shifting all the time. It's like boom, 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 boom. And it's not the most gentle of shifters. So I prefer to go on custom. No, actually it's manual. I prefer to go manual. And I uh, keep my, uh, I keep it capped around that 1750, 1800 RPM. And then I pull it in about uh, eighth gear when I'm empty. And when you need to have the extra power, you have to turn off your eco mode, get to that 2,000 RPMs, and drop your gears down. And uh, that's what you got to do. That's how I like to run it. And maybe I'm running it all wrong to how maybe you run it. But I don't know how many times that we've nearly stalled old Johnny and that case, as you've seen in the other video where, where uh, uh, old Red got humbled. Um, the John Deere, I think, has more lugging power. Like, you can get it, you can keep it around that 1800 RPM and it will lug there a little bit longer than the case will. Uh, as soon as that case drops below pretty much 1950, you're just about screwed, all right? And, uh, but the case shifts quicker. That's, that's my opinion, it shifts a little bit quicker. Not quick enough, though, to keep you from stalling if you're climbing a hill, though. It won't shift quick enough. Nothing will, I guess. And pretty much, we're just splitting hairs. I noticed that the seat isn't as good right off the bat. Like, what is this? Like, come on. That is the biggest pain. I know it can come up. But it's just a pain in the butt whether it's up all the way. Hold on. Like, there it is. It's up all the way. This is not comfortable. This is not a comfortable seat. John Deere needs to take a few lessons from either Fent or case when it comes to the seats. Now, I know on the new combines, I think the combines, they actually went and partnered with BMW a little bit, uh, according to the Agrotechnica dude over there. And uh, they got massage seats, I do believe, and heated, cooled, and good lumbar support. But that's on the new. And how many years have they had these tractors out? So don't give me, don't give me all that, well, you can get it all in the new R8RX and the new twin rotor combine that's coming out and maybe some of the new stuff. Well, that's new. Bent and uh, Case have had good seats for 10 years. <laughs> so anyway, we're going to be enough about that and we're going to move on to other things. I also don't give a crap whether my tractor will turn itself. That is of no priority to me whatsoever and maybe that's awesome for you that's what you want maybe you want to buy a tractor based on can it or can it not turn itself but I feel like we're over complicating this just drive it in a straight line map my fields for me 
Uh, I want my auto steer and everything. I want a good shifting transmission. I don't give a crap whether it steers itself around a corner. That is absolutely no harm. I like to do a little something, all right? I look forward to a corner. I don't get to steer this thing for miles on end, because unless we got lots of slews to go around, I actually enjoy the cornering, you guys. It's okay, I can actually turn a corner. I look forward to it. I turned the corner and I got, woohoo, in a half a mile, I'm gonna get to turn it again. Don't take that from me. <laughs> I really like the side blind. That's awesome. You do not have a side blind on the case. You got a back one, there's a back one here, and we got a front one also on the case, but we got a side blind, I like that. As I said before, I like the case where my throttle, my hydraulics, um, also all lit up on the joystick, and my auto steer, and everything is all on the same handle. It's all on the same function. I don't like going from here to 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 here. And they're like, well, Mike, you can program all that. I'm sure you can, but I shouldn't have to. I shouldn't have to program a cotton picking thing. In fact, for the price of these tractors, they should come with someone standard to sit in your buddy seat just to program it for you. Be like, ah, oh, sir, turn my corner. No, I'm gonna turn my corner. Sir, program this thing for me. Okay, now unprogram this thing. There should be a person sitting in this buddy seat just to wash my windows all the time, every day. Vacuum my carpet. Go unplug my mid-row banders. Do a seat test. Fuel. Def, check my oil and grease. It should come standard with somebody like that for the price of these things. I don't care what color it is. I'm not picking on John Deere, Case, or Ben. I'm talking about them all. It's getting stupid ridiculous. How can you justify six, seven hundred thousand dollars for a tractor? A tractor, only one. Okay, I'm done that rant now. I won't bring it back up. Oh, there's that corner post again. Oh, how I've missed you. <laughs> I really like the monitor though. And I know, yes, you can take this John Deere monitor and you can stick it in any color tractor that you would like. But uh, it is nice to be able to just knock my center line right there, set my track right there. Yeah, it is a nice monitor. I'll give it that. No issues with that. As far as hydraulic flow, I actually don't notice any difference. Uh, they both have twin pumps. I don't notice any uh, any drawbacks, any legs. The only thing that I would notice is when you pop your hydraulics on with old Johnny, they're quiet. When you pop your hydraulics on the case, it screams. It's like you click it on, it goes, Help! click it on, it goes, Help! you know what I mean? And then you're good. The initial startup is kind of like uh, it's kind of like a drowned cat. Uh, that's the only thing I can think of. Brian just texted me now. He's like, man, this case is a lot louder. And I'm like, yes, it is. He's like, the whole sound of it's just different. And I'm like, it is. So that's the great thing, you guys. We get to go from tractor hop, tractor hop, pull in the same drill, pull in the same load. We hardly have any product in our tank, so it's pulling super easy right now. But it's really cool that we can just go jump back and forth, jump back and forth, because you get to see those, you get to really sense and feel those first impressions. And since the cab is smaller, one thing I noticed right off the go, because I hit my elbow, I'm like, oh yeah, my old friend. As soon as you go back to look, this window is right freaking here, where the case is farther back. So you want to just swing back and look, you can hit your elbow in this window all the time. That's not so in the case, it's a lot deeper, the window's farther back behind the seat. And I don't have my seat all the way back, you guys. It's not all the way back. It's probably in the middle to farther back, yes but I run the case the exact same way. So that is annoying. I just noticed that now because I just hit my elbow on it. And I'm like, come on! And it's a race. Actually, it's not a race, you guys. Uh, we're both empty. We're both pulling the same speed. So basically, we're just checking out the features. This isn't even really a pull comparison at all because we're both empty. And we're on a flat field. Heck, even the fence could pull out here. <laughs> oh, but look at that. <laughs> um, I can't see my hitch. So that's the nice thing about the case. You can see the tongue of your tractor. 
Uh, yes, maybe you could put cameras in there. Maybe everything is integratable. But why should I do that? Why is that not an option, John Deere? Why is that not a factory option? Why, as soon as I put this puppy in reverse, bam, backup camera comes on of my whole hitch and everything. Like, come on, that's not that difficult. I should note that fueling a John Deere is not very fun. We have designated, well, I shouldn't say designated, but we do have guys that fuel the tractors, and the RX is their most disliked tractor to fuel. They pretty much fight for the case tractor because it's easy to fuel, or the Fent. But this little ladder, the step thing that they got going up there, which is a zero platform, it's not very handy. They do not have steps out here. You gotta come up and then jump over to this thing, and it's a pain in the butt, I'm just being honest. I can show you that better when I'm outside. Also, another thing is uh, the door light is over here on the John Deere, where the case, it's up here. I actually prefer it to be centered because lots of times I put my lunch kit and stuff on this side of the tractor, and when it's dark out, you can't see what you're looking for, so you're going to turn your light on, and they don't have a, they don't have a light up there. There's no light. It's way over there. So I turn this light on, and this is it. Just kind of lights up this side of the tractor, and it's still dark over on this side of the tractor. So I feel like that could have been managed just a little bit better. <laughs> we already know that the John Deere has ten times the sound system of a case, so only because the case does not have a sound right? system. So I just wanted to show you some things here. So it's easy to fuel if you're on an angle like this, right? Because, look, you just climb up your step. Easy peasy. Really, there should be something here. And you stand here. You can hold on to this, or you can hold on to this railing that goes all the way around the cab. No big deal. But that's not how we fuel. Why? Well, the drill's in the way. How am I supposed to fuel like that? I need to be over here. So, if that be the case, then you need to turn your, your tractor. And all you gotta do is you gotta do a loop this way so it spreads the gap. As soon as you spread that gap, it is no longer fun to fuel. And speaking of turning the tractor, let's check out our hydraulic steering wheel here. Now, it does not matter what setting you have for your steering assist, it has no matter whatsoever. That only adjusts how easy this turns, okay? Whether you want one finger, two fingers, or if you wanna try and do it with two hands. That's all that does. That doesn't touch anything with your cylinders. So, I'm turning, I'm turning. That's it, that's all we got. That's all we got, guys. I'm trying here. I can keep turning this, I can keep turning the steering wheel, but it's just powering out. It's not doing nothing, look at that. That's what I'm talking about. That's the resistance, you guys, I'm talking about. If you're in a case tractor right now, you can spin that thing all the way over. Not so in a John Deere. Look at that. You can hear it. It's trying. It's trying. Come on. Come on. It won't do it. Yeah, I get it. You guys get it. So just imagine this puppy being loaded and you're on a hill and you want to turn this direction. It doesn't like it. There's resistance. It will do it. As soon as you start moving, it will do it. But a case will do it standing still. And a case will do it when you're moving and it will do it at a slow speed. That's one of the first things I notice is there's no resistance. So. That's the two cents on that. Okay, so let's just try and turn. We're in, uh, let's go to third gear here. So there's some resistance. There's resistance on this steering wheel. Okay, that's all I meant by it. Now I'm gonna park like this so I can show you how it's like, oh show you what it's like here to fuel this thing. Okay, so the fuel wagon just rolls up here, whatever kind of fuel truck you got. There's no steps up here. There's no steps, there's a platform, but there's no steps. So you gotta come up over here, holding your uh, your fuel, well, unless you got someone to hand it to you. So you climb up these little steps, and there's not nearly enough room here. You're holding this. They give you another one right here you can hold. You step on this little platform, now you hold this up here, all the while you're holding your hose, and then you jump over here, you actually it's not much of a jump, it's more like a big step, you big step over here, and then you fuel. Now, when you're up here it's nice, you got a nice big platform, but it's actually not that nice to get to. It's kind of like scaling around an elevator, you're like, woo, woo, you guys get it? You get it? You get it. 
Uh, 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 uh. Yeah, it's still a little bit rougher. Yeah, it's still rougher in the field. That's for sure. There goes Ashton over there. Jared's up over there. Let's see if you can see him. And Brian is somewhere around here in the case. But uh, anyway, I just ran empty. I am bingo on my FERT because we try and get the drills to start running empty when we're on the last field, right? You don't want to have a whole pile carryover, but it never quite works out that way, so we always have a whole pile carryover. <laughs> um, so anyway, I'm empty. So I'm heading up to the approach and I'll wait for these guys to finish their uh, last few passes. All right, so I just want to show you guys some other things here. So as far as unhooking and hooking, first of all, I hate cat five hitches. I wouldn't order another cat, cat five hitch, I'm just saying. Uh, but otherwise, as far as the hydraulics, I prefer the deer. Just because they have these levers right here on the side, these nice handy levers, you can pop these puppies in and out under pressure. And the Fent also has the levers. Uh, the downside is the deer, and especially the Fent. The Fent hydraulics are way up there. It's actually hard to, uh, like you have to like loosen all the bolts and you gotta try and stretch as much hose as you can to get them up into the Fent. Followed by the deer, the case is the handiest because they're actually a little lower, they're way down here. That's my two cents. Another thing that I actually do like about the deer is it has some vents right here at the back so it can blow on my nice bald head. Keep me cool. Where the case, I'm pretty sure it's all up front here. So, yeah. On these RX tractors, they have, it's the same, like John Deere puts the same cab on everything other than their combines. And uh, so, this back window opens up. Now, that's a catch-22 because that's where you run all your wires through. Um, I don't really like having the wires all hanging off the side. I like it underneath the case. It all comes up underneath the cab. It is a pain in the butt to put them in the case. I won't lie about that. But it looks cleaner and neater when you're done versus uh, running them right through here. This is easier to put in, that's for sure. But the look afterwards looks a little uh, looks a little redneck. So take that as you will. It's not a deal breaker, I'm just telling you. I'm just telling you, you guys. Oh, there's the two-track. So the two-track pulls awesome. It has the John Deere, uh, oh crap, I can't remember what liter engine it is. 13, is it 13 something, you guys? You guys would know better than I do, I can't remember. Anyway, it's the 560 RT, and that thing just pulls like a horse, I'm telling you, it's awesome. I think it pulls almost as, just as good as these 620s do, uh, and, it, and they have 620 horsepower. The downside is turning. Turning is not your friend, especially under load. I never got to sit in the two track with you guys. Also the downside to this particular two track is it's a little older version. Only has 85 gallons of flow so it can just barely run it. Yes, you can get twin pumps in them, don't worry. Sorry about the wind. Sorry about the wind. Let's go for a ride! There's Ashton! Hey, I just thought something! This is the last pass of 2020! Woohoo!